Hey everybody, Fifth Horseman here with another KSP Fundamentals, and today we are going to nail a couple non-equatorial satellite contracts. Uh, one of them is a polar orbit, which is very common, and the other is a Colinia orbit, which is named after the Molinia orbits. I, I don't know if I'm saying that right, Molnia orbits. But we don't care about why it's there, all we care about is doing it. And what we're going to do here is we're actually going to hit the... Uh, normal, the polar orbit first. And what you want to do is, if you look here, we've got the same ship we always do. First of all, double click on Kerbin so it is the center. You don't want your ship to be center here. Because what we're going to do is we're going to rotate the screen. I'm using this with my right mouse button to rotate the screen here to get this orbit so it's perfectly flat uh, on the thing. So we're looking at it right from the edge. Now our, our ship on the launch pad is over here, so we actually want to speed up time and let our ship come around and almost get to this line here. That's perfect right there. I just stopped times where I'm almost but not quite there. Now we want to look at the orbit and see which direction do they want us to go. And, and those of you who aren't viewing on uh, 1080p might not be able to see this, but the lines, the little dots on the orbit are going around this way. So we want to launch north because we want to we want our ship to come out north and and follow this orbit this way. Um, normally you launch east. When you're trying to match a specific orbit, you almost never want to launch directly east. But it's daytime. We're ready to go. We're going to turn on the computer. We've already cranked up the, the throttle. And in three, two, one, launch. Now every, uh, every 10,000 meters, the first 10,000 meters of every launch, I should say, are the same. You go straight up until you reach it. The key difference happens, though, when you have to do your gravity turn, which I'm going to do now that we're at 10,000. And you do this to the north by pushing up on your nav ball here, which shoves the ship this way, which is north here. Other than that, though, everything is the same. We're going to go into map mode. We're going to look at our ship. We're going to click on our apoapsis here, and we're going to follow it up the exact same way we do for everything else. Now, one important thing to note when you're when you're doing this launch is that your orbit you start out orbiting this way just in naturally because the because the planet is rotating. So you notice that even though I'm going directly north, my orbit is kind of cockeyed from the normal. Um, what you want to do here is as soon as you get into orbit mode, you notice that it's off like this. You can uh, you can move yourself over to the side a little bit, not too much because you don't want to waste too much of your forward velocity. And then that helps pull this thing over. You'll also notice that we've gone a little bit too far to the right of this guy. Um, that's not a big deal. We're going to be off by a couple degrees once we get into our final orbit, may maybe even less than one, one full degree. Um, it literally doesn't matter. It's, it, as long as it's close, it, the, the fuel to fix it when it's really close is minuscule. But now that we've got our orbit basically north and south, it's, it's missing by a little bit. Bring it back to the right just a little bit here as we're coming up. And you got to keep watching both the nav ball, which is why I like to have it large here, and your uh, your apoapsis here. Because once your apoapsis gets up to about 70, and whoop, we're out of fuel. <laughs> there we go. Once your apoapsis gets up to about 70, there you go, it's 80 now, which is perfectly fine. You're going to want to circularize your orbit. And there's a reason you want to circularize your orbit and not just burn your way up to... Um, the orbit. And that is because you have to care about the dark side of the planet. If I were to burn my orbit up so that it comes right up here and it matches this, we're going to be out here. It, you know, we would be somewhere around here when we, when we do this, and we might be blocked by the sun. So I think it's a better idea to get your ship up into orbit, like so, and then plan your, plan your burn a little bit farther up here. I'm actually going to do it right up here at the North Pole. But if we burn ourselves out here at the North Pole, we're going to be in the sunlight here while we're burning, and then we're also going to be in the sunlight down here where we're dealing with our with our matching the orbits. Now, what you want to do here is, this is very similar now to the equatorial orbit, um, because it's basically just like launching into that orbit. All you want to do is burn out to get your orbit to touch. And just, again, getting close is enough. I'm just making sure these two these two things are matching here. Notice we're we're off by what is the ascending node? Uh, 1.8 degrees. Not a big deal. We're 1.8 degrees off. Um, we can fix that quite easily. 
We're actually going to fix that here. What you want to do is this, this see the ascending node and the descending node go through the center of the planet. So you want to trace a line from the ascending node here. You can, sadly, we have these two orbits here, kind of making things a little bit harder. But all we care about is this singular orbit here, this ascending node tracing down to this ascending node through the planet. So when we're about here, which is happens to be where this ascending node is, that has nothing to do with this. <laughs> but we want to, we can do a little bit of a burn here. And you notice our orbit wants to be a little bit farther this way. So we're going to burn it like this. And there you go. Now we're 0.4 degrees off, which is definitely good enough. So now we do the old standard, which we did in the last episode, which is burn up so that these orbits are roughly the same size. And normally I would say then uh, fix them radially, but that is pretty good. Uh, if you want to see fixing it radially, watch the last episode because I nailed it on the first try on this one. Then just time warp yourself out there and do the burn that you had planned. And then look at the contract. We have reached an unmanned probe who has reached the designated orbit. And then we're just going to maintain stability for 10 seconds. Even though we're not even close to the orbit we wanted, it still counts. And I just learned you can right click these instead of clicking on them to dismiss that contract. Sadly, they still show up in here. OK, so we, we've nailed the, the polar orbit. Now for the collinear orbit. And this technique will work for any non-equatorial, non-normal. The normal is kind of a special case where you launch directly to the north. But this is basically the same idea. You're just not, la not launching directly to the north. You're going to be launching in a weird direction. Um, you also want to always launch in the sun. So if we were to launch, if we were to wait and come over here, we wouldn't be in the sun. We would be uh, in the dark. So we're going to wait till till Kerbal Space Center is over here, which is like a good five, six hours from now. So we're going to rotate around. This is why you want to double click on the planet when you're in map mode so that so that things stay the same. So, whoa, I went I went too far. <laughs> so easy to do in time warp, but that's OK. What's an extra day between friends here? We're going to time warp ourselves around it. And again, you want to get really close to it, but not quite to it yet. Now, look at this thing. If you can't see it because you're not watching it 1080p, the orbit is going around this way. So much the same as the as the other one, we're going to be launching to the north, but we're not, not going to be launching directly north. We're going to be launching kind of northeast-ish. And it's really hard to tell exactly what to do. But if you wanted to launch directly east, you would point yourself at the 90 degree mark. If you want to launch directly north, you would launch at the zero degree mark, or actually probably closer to the like the you know negative 10 degree or negative 5 degree if we really wanted to get particular about it. But this way, we want to launch somewhere around probably 20 to 30 degrees because um, this would be 45, this would be 0. So it's a little bit closer to 45 than 0, probably. Um, and I'm just eyeballing this. Uh, but but we'll, let's cut. The, let's split the difference between 45 and 0 and say 22 degrees, which we're never going to hit. So let's just say 20, because we're going to get a couple extra degrees because of the rotation of the planet. This is all just spitballing and eyeballing. Um, but we're going to want to launch, and the, the nav ball is different than the look here, because the nav ball north is down, but east is still to the right. So we want to launch this way to get our rocket to go this way. It's important that you note where the north is and the fact that this is always east on the nav ball, as long as you build your rocket right. <laughs> but anyway, this is 45. So this is halfway between 45 is about where these numbers are in the nav ball. So we're going to go for this, uh, we're going to go for this, um, what do you call it, this, this white line here in between. When we do our gravity turn, that's what I want to hit, is this area here. You want to do this every time you're hitting a non-standard orbit. You want to kind of guesstimate where to go and then launch in that direction. And it, there is no, uh, there's no shame in hitting F5 on a launch pad and trying again if, you're, if your guess was wrong or if you launch in the wrong direction. Everybody does it. Don't feel, don't feel bad. Um, but now that we're at the right place, we know which direction we're going to launch. We are going to turn on the computer, make sure we're throttled up. And in three, two, one, launch. <laughs> Now, as we're launching, here's a trick. You can rotate your ship, uh, and I suggest you do so. Uh, I like to turn to the right just because I'm so used to it. So you can rotate your ship so that you are aimed down that line that you had planned on launching on. So when you get to 10,000 meters, you can actually just turn to the right. You don't have to, like, figure out where to go. And I wholeheartedly suggest that. It's a, it's a great idea.
And don't worry about this. It looks like we're completely off. We're not. Uh, it's just we had more sideways rotation, just like with the with the polar orbit. Now, once your once your descending node gets gets pretty close, like it's right now, now it's one point seven. I uh, I changed my my heading to match what the orbit mode said, and I think and that's a good idea so that you don't have to worry about. Okay, we just ran out of fuel at eighty meters here, so we're gonna ditch that. Um, so we don't have to worry about um, overcorrecting from the from the orbit. Uh, I was just basically just watching this once it got down to about uh, under two, I, and then the orbit thing snapped. All I did was I was aimed this way and I rotated myself to aim this way, so that so that I was matching up with what the actual correct orbit was. And you'll notice that this doesn't match with the line we had planned before. That's partially because we're going up at a weird angle. As we go up, our our direction on the nav ball is going to change as we pass over the pole. And we have a, a fortuitous thing. This thing happens actually fairly frequently when you're doing these when you're doing these burns. And you can actually, as long as you don't, you're not worried about the sun, which we're not, because we're going to be in the sun when we have to do this burn. Um, you can actually get your orbit to touch. This actually kind of happened on accident to me, to be honest. But what you can do is you can add a maneuver right here, where we're where we're already matched up with the orbit, and then just burn ourselves out. And that is probably enough to do it, although you notice the north-south is a little bit too much, so I'm going to bring that down a little bit. And while this is the worst time to do a north-south burn like this, it's actually not that bad because we're, we're piggybacking it off of the, uh, the, big, the big forward burn that we're doing, so that um, even though we're, we're wasting fuel by burning sideways where we're going really fast, we're, we're actually not because... Uh, it's trigonometry. It's it's hard to explain. It's something I'm actually going to get to in the next episode. I didn't really intend to, to cover it right now. But uh, the idea is if you were to walk a mile east and then walk a mile north, you would end up walking two miles. That's like that's what the equivalent of doing a forward burn and then a normal burn would be. But if you walk a mile east and a mile north at the same time, you actually walk uh, uh, about... 1.4 miles instead of two miles. So piggybacking two burns together actually saves you a lot of money. Or fuel, I guess. Again, follow the nav ball as closely as you can because you set up this node, you want to make sure you hit it. And boom, we have reached the designated orbit, just like before. All three times we have not paid any attention to these numbers here because we don't care about them. I hope you enjoyed watching this. I hope you learned something. I enjoyed making it and I enjoy teaching you. I am Fifth Horseman and I will, as always, Talk at you later.